Hello, my name is Brian Van Bibber. Before I tell you this story, I want to be completely upfront with you. I'm not a doctor. I'm actually a data scientist, but more importantly, I'm a dad to an amazing son on the autistic spectrum. For those who are unaware, autism affects a sizable portion of our population, and it's exploded in size over the last 20 years. What I'm about to share with you is a David and Goliath story. And if you're a parent like me, you might recognize yourself in this journey. For the last two decades, I thought I knew who the players were. I thought autism was Goliath, this massive, intimidating force, and my son was David, bravely facing an impossible battle every single day. Our story began like so many others. Our son was born in 2000, right as autism rates were exploding across America. From when we first noticed the symptoms to when we finally got our diagnosis five years later, we found ourselves thrust into a world where the medical professionals were unprepared and scrambling to build an infrastructure for this tsunami of new patients. Like every other parent in our shoes, we became warriors. We advocated, we fought, we searched for answers. We were fortunate. We found good group therapy across town and good occupational therapy, a wonderful pre-K program. We learned to live with our version of Goliath, and we thought we had it all figured out. But then at age 14, everything changed. My son developed a severe stutter, accompanied by stemming that we had never seen before. Suddenly, our David was facing the giant again. Years of specialists, the local children's hospital, the adult neurologist, the best minds we could find, every one of them telling us the same thing. We don't know what went wrong, and we don't know how to fix it. Now, I hope that some of those doctors get a chance to watch this story, because as it turns out, the answer was right in front of us the whole time. Through countless nights of reading NIH documents, CDC documents, watching YouTube videos, listening to medical podcasts, Doing things that parents do for their children. I've learned something that has now changed everything. I realize I'd been wrong about who Goliath really was. And more importantly, I found out that there's a rock that we could bring to this fight that would bring the giant to its knees. So please join me as I take you through the details of what completely transformed the way that we're living our lives today. Because here's the reality. My son has faced every obstacle with grace. He's never given up, and he's always been the most positive person in the room. He truly is the real hero in this story. I'm just the dad who's standing behind him. Looking forward to taking you through this. I want to get started by talking about what I've learned about Goliath, his devastating power source. It's been discovered that folate deficiency and broken methylation, now that's a big word, we're going to talk about that in a minute, but folate deficiency and broken methylation are at the root of the expressed symptoms that we are seeing in our has household. So let me explain what this is and why it matters. Not just for my son, not just for me, but potentially for you and yours. Every single second of every day, your body is under constant assault. Environmental toxins, chemicals in our food and water, radiation, even just the normal process of living, all of it damages your DNA. And your brain, it's especially vulnerable to this constant attack. But your body isn't defenseless. You have an incredible repair system called methylation. Think of it as your body's elite maintenance crew working in a factory around the clock to repair damaged DNA or produce neurotransmitters that your brain desperately needs or to clean out toxic waste that builds up in your cells. Here's what's absolutely crucial. This entire critical system depends on an important thing, adequate levels of activated folate. Without it, your maintenance crew is like trying to rebuild a house without tools. They simply cannot do the job. For individuals with autism whose brains are already working overtime to process this world differently, this maintenance system isn't just important, it's absolutely critical. They need it working at peak efficiency just to function. So how have we addressed this problem so far? Well, folate levels have not, the, in, the, in our country being low, are, it's not a new problem. 
Um, we've actually tried to address this issue in the past because of neural tube defects back in the 90s. So let me give you a little bit of detail. In March of 1996, the FDA decided to improve our folate levels uh, in order to address this issue of neural tube defects by uh, fortifying all of our grains with folic acid. And this was to be in place by January of 1998. And there is a video out on YouTube that I will put in the show notes that gives you a great history of why they felt this was the great thing to do and, and the, the success that did come from it. But here's where the story takes a turn. Dr. Doherty reported nine years ago on how 40 to 70% of the autistic community has a problem with folate conversion. And 90% of them have a problem with methylation in that entire engine, whether it's on the folate, folic acid to folate side or the methionine to homocysteine, which I'm going to talk about in a, in a second. But these two wheels, the, the autistic community has a large percentage of them that has a break somewhere in this space. And it's not just the folks that are in the autistic community. Nearly one in two of us has a problem with folic acid. Between 40 and 45% of us will have some form of the variant of the MTHFR gene. This means that you're going to have a really hard time turning folic acid into folate in order for your body to use it in the methylation process. But let's bring this back to the autistic community. Again, that percentage that have a problem with this is staggering. It's 90%. Think about what that means. We've been trying to help these kids out, but for 9 out of 10, we've been giving them the equivalent of a key that doesn't fit the lock. So Goliath's power, again, comes from active folate deficiency and broken methylation. And our solution, synthetic man-made folic acid, isn't passing muster for too large a portion of the population to ignore. Now, let's talk a little bit more about methylation. Remember, I said it's the repair system, and it's a bit more than that. And I like to try to visualize it a little bit so that it's easier to digest. So I like to think of it as a crew of workers inside of a factory that are taking inputs and creating outputs. It's the data scientist in me. So the raw materials here, these really matter. If you want your body to produce a neurotransmitter called serotonin, you need to give it the raw material called tryptophan. You know, that stuff that's in Turkey that makes us sleepy. If you don't have that raw material, you can't create it. Now, there are nine essential amino acids. And if you don't have an amazing diet full of whole foods, you should look at adding in a simple scoop of powder to your wake-up routine in the morning and make sure that you're getting everything that you need throughout the day. So if you have the raw materials and you have a working methylation engine, which we'll describe in a second, then you should be able to repair DNA or synthesize neurotransmitters as expected. But as I mentioned, up to 90% of the autistic community has a broken methyl methylation engine on either the folic acid or the recycling of the homocysteine. Now, those are big words and it's going to get even more complicated. So please take notes, pause it, rewind it as many times as you need. So here is why it's so hard for people to talk about this issue. It's extremely confusing. Just look at this chart. And this is one of the clearer charts that I found. I'm going to try to pull out the most important, important parts for you. And there will be links to the source materials at the end to help you understand all of this. So what I first want to do is to direct your attention to the top right circle. This represents the methylation process. Now you'll see that we start with methionine. It gets used for DNA repair or neurotransmitter synthesis, resulting in something called homocysteine, labeled there with HCY. Our bodies then take that activated folate in our system, combine it with homocysteine and with the power of B12, convert it back into methionine. Now, here's what you need to know. Methionine is good. It's an essential amino acid, just like tyrosine, that we get from our food. Homocysteine is bad, and we have to convert it back into methionine, 
or we have to get rid of it. We want to convert it back into methionine so that it can go and repair more DNA or create more neurotransmitters. If we can't recycle it, though, we have to expel it from our body. If we lack the ability to do both of those th things, then homocysteine is going to build up, which causes inflammation, which has all kinds of cascading downstream effects. The other problem is that there's no new methionine as an output of the recycling, which is required to start the methylation process. So this methionine to homocysteine process continues around and around and around 24 by 7 by 365. Now, if you have either of the genetic mutations for the MTRR or MTR genes, you're going to have a problem with methylation. The only way to find out is to get a genetic test. I happen to have a homozygous variant of the MTRR gene. This means that I can't help to repair my MTR gene that's doing all the heavy lifting in combining the folate and the homocysteine. Now, not knowing this, I've had inflammation pretty much my entire adult life because I don't recycle homocysteine very well. This is just part of the problem, though, because our main source of B9 currently comes in the form of folic acid. And it, if you look at that folic acid wheel, it requires us to transform it to be able to use that activated form, which is called methylfolate, that 5-MTHF. So again, 40 to 45% of the total population cannot transform or has difficulty transforming folic acid very well. This means that we're likely going to have a folate deficiency, which is required for methylation. See where this is going? So why does this even matter? Again, this methylation process, it repairs our DNA. It's producing neurotransmitters that govern our mood give us motivation, allow us to have stress responses that are healthy. And pretty much everything that makes up our personality comes out of this. So that's a lot to take in. And I want to bring it back to just the discussion around the autistic community. Now, naturopathic doctors believe that autism is not necessarily what you see. Rather, what you see is the expression of symptoms that are related to autism. A lot of these symptoms can be addressed by fixing the problem that we've been talking about here today. An example is Dr. Sonia Doherty. She put out a video nine years ago explaining how this process works and how the autistic community is having challenges with folate and with methylation. She has a practice where she is helping patients find extraordinary results. She's working to help explain the problem to the communities. And she's put together an in-depth, long-form explanation, which will be in the show notes as well, that I recommend you all take the time to listen to. What she has taught me has been startling. Here's what she and the other NDs are telling us. Number one, we have to remove the folic acid from our diet. Our folate receptors bind to the folic acid with preference over regular folate. And one out of two of us can't convert it efficiently. And almost all of the autistic community has a problem. We need to also repair the methylation process through our diet. So consider supplemental methylfolate, supplemental methylcobalamin. Look at options like supplemental betaine if you don't have the ability to recycle homocysteine, if you have that MTRR or MTR variant. Consider N-acetylcysteine to reduce glutamate and transform that into glutathione, which is the universal antioxidant for our bodies. Consider supplemental cod fish oil, which is high in vitamin A and has the omegas that we need. Okay. Work with your doctor on this. Talk to them about what you've learned and come up with the right plan for you based on your genetics. And that's just what we've done. So let me go back to the David and Goliath story. I had absolutely no idea how much of this was going to be valid, how much of it was going to apply to me or my son, but the logic was there. And it seemed so simple to not try. So we started on the additive portion of the diet. We didn't start removing folic acid because it's in everything. 
but we have reduced it. We did start taking supplements based on our genetics, and what happened next was just amazing. Within a couple of days, my son comes up to me in the hallway, looking me right in the eyes, which those who have autistic children know that is a rare thing. And he says, Dad, my thoughts have been quieter lately. And I thought to myself, that's a really good indicator. And I was completely unsolicited from somebody who normally wouldn't have shared something like that. Within a few more days, his adolescent onset stuttering started to wane. Now, it's still with us, but the difference is night and day. It only happens occasionally when he's very tired or when he is very stressed out about something. As of right now, he's seeing the world in a whole new way. He continues to report back, noting that he sees more details in things. He's also been able to keep his cool a lot better when he gets frustrated. He's his worst critic at all times, and he gets so mad at himself if he gets something wrong. And that has been a lot better for him lately, too. I can only say that I wish I would have been able to find this out so long ago. Now, my whole family is taking the right supplements. We're all losing weight. We're feeling amazing, and we're really looking forward as to what is to come next. I want to thank you very much for taking the time to listen to me. I know this was a lot. I hope that it's been helpful. I hope that you're able to use this information and these links to go out and research yourself what is available and what are the issues that are really causing the problems that we're facing today. Thank you so much.